what's the matter with me? Why do I feel this way? It's all such a rut. You can't get away from it. It's just the same in Mexico. You know it was. Were the Mexican cats any different from the ones you know in New York? Why don't you give me something for Christmas? What would I like? Let's see. I think I'd like to meet someone different. You like the man upstairs. There he is coming in now. Did you do that? Why don't I ever meet people like that? What's the matter? Want to go out? All right then, Pyrex. Ms. Holroyd? Yes. My name is Shepard Henderson. I live on the floor above. Are you my landlady? Yes. How do you do? Are you busy or could I see you for a moment? Certainly. Come in, won't you? Thanks. Take off your coat? Thanks. I won't stay long. I imagine you're going out. I am too. I was picking up some last minute presents I forgot. Would you like a drink? I don't think I ought to take the time for that, and uh, I don't know that this is an altogether friendly visit. Oh? Well, you've been away ever since I moved in. It's something the matter. You should have called the agents. I did, although I don't think it's done much good. What well, seems to be the trouble? Well, the lady who lives on the floor above me, I think she's your aunt? Yes. Did you ever give her a key to my apartment? No, of course not. Why? Well, because she's been in it a couple of times. <laughs> I found her there. And I'm afraid I don't awfully like it. No, naturally, but how would she get in? Well, she said she found the door open. Now, that may have been true the first time, although I don't think so. It definitely wasn't true the second time, and even if it were. I'm very sorry. Yes, well, I thought I'd better tell you now that you're back. And that's all. Isn't it enough? I didn't mean it like that. Well, actually, it's not all. I think your aunt is a rather peculiar lady. Oh? Is she by any chance studying dramatics? Dramatics? Well, I can hear her through the ceiling at night. It sounds like she's reciting or something. Uh. <laughs> oh, you know, you know about that. Well, what is it that she's doing, or shouldn't I ask? Well, it, it's a kind of dramatics. You can't hear what she says. No. And I'm sorry, but there is another thing. Her cooking. Or at least that's what I think it is. Unless she's an amateur chemist. But well, certainly doesn't smell like anything I'd be willing to eat. It's not her cooking. She makes things like lotions and perfumes and things. It's not my idea of perfume. <laughs> and that is all. You sound as if you were expecting something worse. No. No, no, no. Well, there is one more thing, although I, I can't be sure it's she who does it. What's that? Well, ever since I caught her in my place and spoke to the agents about it, Rather firmly, I'm afraid. Well, I'm sure they spoke to her. Well, every day at 8 o'clock in the morning, my telephone rings. And every evening at midnight, too. And when I go to answer, there isn't anybody there. I've talked to the phone company about it, but they can't trace anything. And you think this is Aunt Queenie? I've got no proof, but, well. Mr. Henderson, I am most awfully sorry. I'll speak to Aunt Queenie. She is a bit eccentric. But I can promise you that none of this will happen again. Can you promise? Yes, I can. I, I really can. Well, thanks then. I, I don't mean to be unpleasant. I'm only sorry that I haven't been here before. You've been traveling about, I understand. Yes. I went to Haiti and then on to Mexico. Well, where about to Mexico? I had a house in Taxco. Did you by any chance run into Sid Redlich while you were down there? He's the man who wrote that book on magic. Magic in Mexico. He left by the time I got there. Why are you interested in that sort of thing? Not personally, but professionally. I'm a publisher. Did you publish his book? No, although I wish I had. It sold like the Kinsey Report. You mm, can't think why. It was sensational. And completely phony. And they sold him a whole lot of that fake tourist stuff and he swallowed it whole. Maybe they did the same thing with Kinsey. <laughs> but I had heard he was ready to change publishers and I'd kind of like to get his next one. 
Well, I've written to him several times, but I've gotten no answer. Well, maybe you'd like to meet him. Oh, do you know him? Not personally, but I, I know some people who do. I could arrange something. Well, thanks. I, I would really, I really would appreciate that. Well, I, I might as well be going. Won't you have that drink? I, I have some martinis in the kitchen. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I am late. But if I may have a rain check. Yes, of course. I'll have Red that's here to meet you. Well, thanks. That would be fine. I heard he's a drunk and a nut. But, uh, and I said, this is, this is quite interesting here. Well, who did this? My brother. Well, he's good. Uh, what, I don't know his stuff? I don't think so, Nick. He's very lazy. It's a strange face. Who is it? Do you know? A Brazilian girl. She used to dance in a nightclub here called the Zodiac. Well, I don't know it. I don't imagine you would. Well, why not? Well, it, it's kind of a dive. Well, but you know it. Yes, I've been there. Oh, you've got visitors. Excuse me.
So help me. Agla. Salamandre. Brazo. And the Sturio. Still, I swear. Question of being ashamed. No, Auntie. Don't you ever wish for. Well, wish you weren't. No! Well, that you were like those people that you sit next to on buses. Oh, what did I come from? No! I was for years before I came into it. Yes, but you came into it late. And I don't mean humdrum, I just, I mean unenlightened. And I, I don't hanker for it all the time, only sometimes. Darling, you're depressed. I know. I expect it's Christmas. It always upsets me. You wait till you get to Zoe's party and see all your old friends again. I don't want to see all my old friends again. I, I want something different. Well then, come with me to Mrs. Zapata's then. She has some very interesting people. Some French people from the Paris chapter. Oh, Auntie, I didn't mean that when I said I wanted something different. I, I think I'd like to spend the evening with some everyday people for a change instead of us. With Mr. Henderson. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Too bad he's getting married. <coughs> Still, I suppose. Married? Yes, and quite soon. They're going to announce it New Year's Eve. Just how did you know this? Right, right, the telephone. Yes, dear. And who is he getting married to? Do you know? Well, I don't know her last name. But her first name is Merle. Merle? The only person I ever knew by the name of Merle was a girl I went to college with. Her name was Merle Kittridge. She used to write poison pen letters. And I caught her writing one about me once. That's why we had all those terrible thunderstorms that spring. <laughs> she was absolutely terrified of them. Why, we had one every evening for an entire month. It was most extraordinary. You mean that was you? Oh, Gillian, you were naughty. <laughs> she was a nervous wreck by the end of the term. And you think this might be the same girl? What was she like? Let's see. She was southern, blonde, and completely helpless. This one's blonde. He has a picture on his bureau. Appealing underneath a liar and a sweep uh, and a bow snatcher. Well, did you ever hear what happened to her? I think she became a decorator or something. This one's a decorator. <coughs> oh? Mm -hmm. Well, there has to be more than one decorator in New York with the name of Merle. And if he's engaged, well, that rules him out anyway. I don't see why. Well, I'm not a Southern Belle, and I don't go around stealing other women's men. Although I would if it were Merle Kittridge. I could find out for you. Still, New Year's Eve, that wouldn't give me much time. You wouldn't need time. Just one quick little potion. Or four small words to tie like it you once told me. I wouldn't want to get in that way. You would take the challenge out of it. 